So today we're gonna be talking about something that you might not have given much thought to, and that is tracing paper. Uh, there's actually tracing paper and tracing film. Is there a difference? If so, what is it? We're gonna be talking about that. And I'm gonna throw in a few ninja tips for you. So that's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Reese. This is Weaver Leather Supply. Today we're gonna be talking about tracing film versus tracing paper versus doing it yourself. This DIY is an option that most of us have at some point have tried, and that is simply printing off an image and then laminating it with tape, most of the time front and back. This has got some pros, some cons, and then we're gonna be talking about the tracing paper versus tracing film. So let's go ahead and jump in and start with the one that we've all tried at some point, and that's packing tape on the pattern. This is a great little option when you're kind of in a bind, you run out of tracing paper and you need to get something done now. But this is not something that I would suggest that you make a habit of and use on a regular basis. Now, full transparency, this is what I did for probably the first year, year and a half that I was tooling. I didn't really, I never bought any tracing paper. I just did this. There's some pros and cons to it. The first pro would be that it's very durable. It tends to last a really long time. It's waterproof, like all the options that we're talking about today. But it's got some pretty significant downsides to it. The, the biggest downside is that when you're transferring the line from the paper to the leather, it really tends to widen that line. And there's a lot of situations, and this pattern's a great example, where you really need to get in there and be able to create some definition and some precision and some finesse in your drawing. And when you're going in with a ballpoint stylus and you're using a pattern like this that's got tape on both sides, what ends up happening is that line just gets wider and wider and it eliminates all the precision from your, from your pattern. The one upside to it is that essentially it eliminates one of the tracings. So when you're using tracing paper, you have to put the tracing paper on top of the image, trace it onto the, the paper, then you take the tracing paper, put it on your leather and transfer it to the leather. Well, because the image is already here, it eliminates that first tracing step. The downside is this is not precise at all because that tape just widens the line. And because this is such a poor option compared to the other two, we're not even gonna discuss it in the comparison as we go through the video, but just know that if you're in a bind, this is an option. It's just not a really good one. Now let's jump in and let's start talking about the difference between tracing paper and tracing film. So if you're like me, you might not have even known that there was another option besides tracing paper. I didn't realize that tracing film was a thing and I certainly didn't know there was a difference between the two. A couple of months ago, I needed some more tracing paper so I ordered some from Weaver. I had always gotten my stuff from the craft store. So I put in an order and one of the things I ordered was the tracing film. And when I got it, I was a little concerned because this stuff is much more rigid than the tracing paper and it has an opacity to it. It's almost like a cloudiness to it. So I was a little concerned that this wasn't gonna be as effective and easy to use as the thinner tracing paper. So today, I, after several months of using the two of them, I wanted to go through and kind of show you some of the things I've noticed between the two options and then let you decide which one's best for you. So we're gonna be taking a look at four different categories today. Visibility, durability, smudgeability, and yes, I made that word up, and versatility. So let's start with visibility first. So how does the tracing film compare to the tracing paper in regards to visibility? Well, that's the first test I wanted to put it through. And as you can see here, the tracing paper that we've all used is fairly transparent. In fact, it's very transparent. It's very easy to see the image below the tracing paper and transfer it over. The tracing film has a little bit more of an opaqueness to it, almost kind of like a cloudiness to it. But as I went through and transferred the image to the tracing film, I really didn't run into any problems at all of seeing the pattern and transferring it to the tracing film. So while yes, the tracing film is more opaque, I didn't run into any problems with transferring it over. And so this one, I kind of, I considered this one a draw. So how about durability? How many times can you use it? Does it tear? What about removing tape? Does that distort the paper and therefore pretty much ruin the pattern that you've got there? Well, as far as transferring the lines to the paper, what I've found over time, and this is not something I can really show you on camera, but what I've found over time is that the tracing paper 
tends to be good for two, maybe three patterns, depending on how how uh, how in depth that particular pattern is. And what I mean by this is you can take that one pattern, use it on this piece of leather, then take that pattern and use it on another piece of leather. You can use it multiple times. Two to three is about the maximum that I'm able to get out of it. When I'm using the tracing film, because it is thicker and it's more durable, what I found is after two, three, four times, I haven't seen any deg degradate degradation to the pattern itself. Uh, my expectation is that you're going to be able to get four, five, six, maybe seven times of use out of the pattern, out of the uh, the tracing film. It's really going to depend on how much pressure you're needing to put on it and how intricate the pattern is on the tracing film. Does it tear? Well, tracing paper, from what I've seen, can snag. It doesn't really tear. It's more like the pencil will bite into it if it's a little too sharp. If you have a ballpoint stylus that's too sharp, it'll snag as well. I haven't run into that nearly as often with the tracing film as I do with the tracing paper. Now, anything can you know, snag or tear, but it's not nearly as prone to it with the tracing film as it is with the tracing paper. So how about removing tape? Well, there's been times when I've used tracing paper when I went to remove the tape that it stretched and bent and distorted the, the tracing paper. I haven't had that happen with the tracing film. So this is a pretty easy call. No matter which one of those durability aspects that we look at, the tracing film wins it hands down. So let's look at smudgeability. And yes, I made that word up. I know it's not a real word. It was a factor I wanted to look at and it fit with the list. So let's run with it for now. So what is smudgeability? If I trace this pattern onto tracing film or tracing paper, how likely is it to smudge as I rub my hand across it? Well, from what I've seen, for the most part, tracing paper will hold the image and not smudge too badly. It depends on how many times you're going over it. I haven't had any smudging when it comes to transferring the pattern on the leather when rubbing my hand across it or anything like that. So I'm going to more or less consider that aspect of it a draw between the two. The area that I have seen a big difference is in when you're trying to erase something, maybe a mistake, off of your tracing paper. Tracing paper really doesn't lift the lead off of the paper. What it does is it just moves it around and creates a smudge. That is not the case at all from my experience with the tracing film. So for that reason, I'm going to give the edge on this one to the tracing film instead of the tracing paper. Now let's take a look at versatility. But before we jump into it, I've got two requests. Number one, if you're enjoying the video, if you're finding it helpful, do me a favor, click the like button. It tells me, tells YouTube, tells Weaver that we're on the right track. The other request that I have for you is, if you have ways that you're using tracing paper, tracing film that I'm not mentioning in this video, do me a favor and leave it in the comments section below. I really want to do a tips and tricks video that's nothing but your suggestions and then give you credit for it in the video. So if you have a way that you like to use tracing paper, leave it in the comment section below. I'll make sure to uh, take a look at that and it might make it in one of our next videos. Now let's talk about how you can use tracing paper versus tracing film in different ways other than transferring the pattern. So I've got three ways for you that you can use tracing film in ways that you might not have thought of. I'm gonna save one of them till the very end of the video. The first two that we're gonna take a look at, the first one is pattern paper. So tracing paper, the thin stuff, it's gonna be very difficult to use this for a pattern. You can use butcher's paper or craft paper, or a variety of things. They're not very durable. This would fall into the same category. It's not gonna be a long-term solution. Whereas the tracing film, because it is thicker, it does have more structure to it, it actually works fairly well as pattern paper and it's fairly inexpensive as well. It's not gonna be a you know multi-year kind of solution, but it would be a multi-project solution for you so that you can make the same project multiple times and just use the one pattern. So pattern paper is one of the ways I would suggest you consider using the tracing film in the future. The other way that I would suggest that you would use it is for shielding in airbrushing. Now I know not everybody out there is airbrushing, but I would encourage you to try it. Maybe take a class or something like that. There's several of us out there that teach it, but for those of you who are airbrushing, Tracing paper is so lightweight that the air just blows it around when you try to go use when you try to use it as a shield. So it's not very useful in regards to protecting areas of your project because it just lifts up and lets the overspray get under there. 
because the tracing film has more structure to it, it's perfect for creating shields. And because you can draw on it, you can really create some custom shields that are a lot more tailored to the project that you're working on, not just straight lines and circles. Now we're gonna jump over to the ninja tips, those pro tips that we talked about. We're done with the comparison aspect of it. I'm gonna let you decide which one of those two is right for you. Now let's jump over to some unique ways that you might not have thought about using it to advance your skills and your projects. The first one that I've got for you is hard lines for hard lines, dots and dashes for shading. Now you may have heard this before, but I've got a little bit of a unique twist on it. If you're doing a floral pattern, then what we wanna do is the edges of the petals, the edges of the stems, that kind of thing. Those are all gonna be hard lines. Those are gonna be lines that you're eventually gonna cut in with your swivel knife and bevel. But what about the shading? Well, you may have seen in some of the patterns out there where you can put dots and dashes around the shading and then you can transfer that so that you know, you know where it goes. But I don't necessarily like transferring those dots and dashes because sometimes they can be kind of hard to get out of the pattern and then they can show up in the final result. So what I like to do is I will take those dots and dashes, I will put them around the shaded area so I know how big it needs to be and then if I'm a little unsure, I can take that tracing paper, lay it back over the top of my pattern as I work through it, and I can see, okay, this shading needs to come down a little further. And that way I don't have the dots and dashes in the project, but I, can, I still have a reference to know how big, how wide, how deep all that shading needs to be. My second ninja tip for you is that you need two ballpoint stylus. Now, why do I say two? Well, one, because you need it unmodified. That, that works for most of the transferring that you're gonna be doing with the stylus. But there's gonna be some of those areas that are very precise, very tight, and you need a smaller profile than what a ballpoint stylus will offer. So what we can do is we can take some very fine grit sandpaper, we can go in there and we can basically grind it down, buff it down until we get rid of the ball that's on the end of it. Now we're not trying to create a sharp point on the end of it, we're simply just trying to narrow the profile of the ballpoint stylus. What that's gonna do is allow us to transfer those tight, precise lines onto our leather without having some big wide line that kind of overlaps each other. So my last tip is gonna be the biggest out of all three of them, and it's gonna be something that I think you're really gonna wanna do in the future, and that is layering. Layering is something that I typically would do on my computer with Photoshop, but you can just as easily do it with, with transfer paper, whether it's tracing film or tracing paper. So what do I mean by layering? Well, when we create a project, you want something in the foreground, you want something in the midground, and then you want something in the background. Let's say you've got an eagle in the foreground, you've got text behind that, and then behind the text, you've got a flag. Well, laying that out can be a little bit difficult if you're not computer savvy or if you're not comfortable with Photoshop or something like that. So what we can do is we can create those on three different pieces of tracing paper. So we put the eagle on top, then we trace, let's say the word freedom behind that. So you got the eagle in the front, you've got the word freedom behind that. And then on the third piece of paper, you've got the flag back behind that. So what that allows us to do is move and manipulate those different elements until we get them in the right position. You can even take your pencil and erase some of the text so that it looks like it's behind the eagle's head. So now that eagle's head is overlapping the word freedom and the word freedom is overlapping the flag. And all of that can be moved and manipulated until you get it the way you want it, tape it together, put a new piece of tracing film down on top of that, trace it so it's all on one cohesive piece, and now you've developed a multi-layer piece without the use of a computer other than printing off the images. So that's gonna do it for this video. I will see you in the next one. In the meantime, go make something amazing.